do you even act in a talking YouTube video? Like, where do you even start? Could I pull like a Maddie Smokes to be like, what is up you guys? It is. There's a reason I only stick to covers, you guys. I do not know how to talk and you're gonna have to hear it today. If you're sticking through this, um, I wanna send you some golden coins. Hello, it's me. It's Abby or Abel, however you know me. Just to clarify, this, this let's start it off. My artist name is Abel and my real name is still Abby. That has not changed. So hi to everyone who's watching. If you've been here for a while, you're new here. Hello, welcome to my channel. I have a very different kind of type of video for you guys today. I decided that I kind of wanted to do something different with my channel. I felt kind of disconnected from it for these past few years in certain ways, and I'm gonna kind of go through that today a little bit um, and get into the topic of what today's video is about. But I kind of wanted to start a vlog series on my channel where I show kind of my day to day, what I do as an aspiring artist, someone who's learning production, someone who's trying to get into the songwriting industry and stuff like that, and kind of show what I do in my day to day. I kind of wanted to give a little bit of an insight into like my life and what I do kind of as someone's trying to make things work and honestly it's freaking hard and things are not always going great like it is for anyone who's just trying to get their shit going dude it's not easy so I was thinking it'd be fun to just show that kind of part of my life what I'm doing um, on my day to day and I think it'd be kind of a fun little spice up for my channel since I only have done covers on here and I want to get to know you guys better and I think that's a great way to start. Today's video is actually the first video that I want to put in the series and I kind of wanted this one to be like a behind the scenes, a quick timeline run through of my experience thus far with YouTube, with the music industry, my EPs that I released, kind of my journey this far and kind of the behind the scenes that you guys haven't really gotten to see because I've only posted covers. I haven't really talked on here, which it's better that I didn't because I probably didn't learn how to talk until last year. So it's best that I didn't do that on my channel. But yeah, today I'm going to attempt to do a not boring <laughs> kind of run through of my experience. I'm not trying to cover up any bullshit, none of that. I'm trying to just throw it out there. Starting kind of from the beginning when I started YouTube, I didn't actually start my YouTube channel. I was 11. My mom started my YouTube channel actually for me and she would just post videos of me from her crappy little like first gen iPhone, you know? Just me covering all the classics, Grenade, Bruno Mars, Rolling in the Deep, Adele. I didn't even really want them up on YouTube. If you wanna know my insight, I wanted them gone for eternity. I honestly think the reason my mom started posting videos of me on YouTube was literally because she's like, my child doesn't talk. But at least she sings. So let's put it on the internet. After a little while of doing YouTube kind of casually, a family friend of ours was like, would she be down to do a video with like my band and do like a nice quality one? And I was like, oh my God. I did a video with them. It was my first professional YouTube video actually that I had ever done with audio, camera, all that jazz. And I covered Summertime. And it's actually the first video that is still up on my YouTube channel to this day. That's what got me into actually taking YouTube seriously. And this was around when I was 12 or 13. So during this time, I was also in vocal lessons. And that's actually what got me into songwriting is the vocal teacher I was with, um, taught songwriting as well and we started working on some stuff. I eventually wrote two other songs on my own after writing one with her, then I had an EP on my hands. By the way, it was not good. I know that I could rip them down, but my mom would actually track me down and kill me. These songs are just, imagine like litter and like a little slide phone. In a song form. That's what it is basically. This is what got me into doing original music on YouTube and all that stuff and in the industry. Here's kind of my intro into production studio part of the industry. We had another family friend named Rami Antoine who, Rami if you're watching this, and I hope you are, I adore you so much. He took me out to Austin with my, I believe it was my dad and my mom the first time I went and we stayed at his house and we recorded my first EP at his studio. I had never worked at this point like in studio at all. During this time, the sound that I wanted to go for was more acoustic pop. And that's because of me, but it's also because the people around me were very, very set on me going into acoustic pop, which is not a bad thing. It's what I was listening to at the time, like any other young girl, I was listening to Taylor Swift, Brit Nicole, I ended up recording this EP and it was very, very pop acoustic. If you thought about it longer than one second, you'd be like, is this Christian music? It had that kind of vibe to it. There's nothing wrong with that, mind you. 
but I kind of over time after doing this kind of style for a while um, with some of my other songs that I recorded also in Austin like worth living for um, and all that stuff I kind of ended up getting very bored with that style and I felt kind of boxed in and it's nobody around me's fault right because I could have done anything I wanted really technically at the time right but I felt kind of there's this part of myself that felt obligated to stay within that style because I did have people at the time telling me hey this is what would be best for your voice and this is where you will find the most success is in this genre and I was like I almost made myself feel obligated to do that because I kind of cared about what people said around me more than what I felt myself which is not the best thing but I did that and it did bring me a lot of great things so I'm not regretful about going into that genre but it's it wasn't something that I wanted to stay in if that makes sense I was using only three chords on guitar and piano I was barely changing up the style that I was doing for a long time and I fell into this like really stagnant kind of pattern with how I was playing music for years because it was like this for me for like four years on YouTube like for so long even though I had successes within that I felt that I was doing the same recipe over and over and over again. I saw that people were enjoying it, but internally I was like, this makes me feel like I'm numb to music. So four years of my life up until basically like over quarantine, essentially, is when I really started realizing, hey, I wanna start doing the styles of music I wanna do on YouTube. When I say that this four year period of time, by the way, was like rough in that sense, like creatively, I don't mean it was all the way bad. I just felt this weird kind of like numbness that I couldn't explain towards the covers that I was doing. And I was like, why am I so bored? Like, why am I so bored with myself? That's kind of what I felt. If that explains it well, I don't know how to talk. Right after I had done the CP and had put out these new YouTube videos, I put out my song Worth Living For. I had gone back to Austin to record it, and when I went out to Austin to record this song, I then recorded my Time After Time YouTube video. A lady did my makeup for these videos, for these videos that we shot, and I need to find a picture. I need to insert a picture because she literally almost gave me a full unibrow. And she used that like spray on makeup that like makes you look orange. And I literally had to later peel the makeup off. Funny enough, it was not me who thought of the song cover idea. It was my dad. Cause he was like, you should do all the classics. Everyone likes the classics. And I was like, yeah. Somebody on Facebook reposted it. The video now is about to hit 12 million. That was also a huge defining factor in my feelings on the industry because having a route like YouTube that's independent where you don't have to sign to someone to get attention on your music or your voice was such a game changer. It made me feel as though I could do this myself. It was genuinely one of the coolest things to happen to me. And if you guys um, were one of those people who shared it or watched it, I genuinely cannot thank you enough for what you've done for me and for my channel. Oh, I was sitting in such a bad position. Honestly, after the time after time video, you can kind of see my fall off. I did post for a long while after that, but that numbness kind of grew over time and I began to kind of disconnect from YouTube. I really started digging into songwriting during age 16, 17. And so I really wasn't as interested in making video content anymore. And I do regret that to this day. Can't take back the past, it's all right. I started trying new things on YouTube, new hair colors on myself. And also at age 16, I was kicked out of my home by my parents. And this was a big thing that I never talked about on YouTube um, because it really wasn't something I needed to share with the public. I was just doing covers, like I said, and now it's a different story because I'm gonna be sharing a little more of my life. I was kicked out of my home because I'm bi. I'm really lucky to be able to say that me and my parents now have a fantastic relationship. We've worked through that really hard point in life. But when I was 16, this happened to me and that was a huge, ding on the stuff with my YouTube because at the time I really couldn't pay for mass videos anymore so I had to start kind of doing things more independently and started filming videos on my own so my audio quality is just ass and all my hair colors were super DIY and weird I almost said DUI and also at this time I started working with um, my now writing partner and artist partner to this day and producer Bob Curtin the way that me and him met is actually through some mutual music friends and we started working on some production for my old songs together but decided that he kind of wanted to start writing with me because I honestly was only writing in that acoustic pop style I had almost been trained over the years to only write that way I went into the studio with him and we ended up the first few sessions I remember it really really vividly was talking for like eight hours about just 
relationships and drama and all this stuff just that I didn't ever feel comfortable almost talking about in writing sessions ever. I didn't realize that this was a part of being an artist until I met Bob. We then wrote the first song of my Able project, which is Consequences. It's kind of a hypothetical story, but th the song is about being trapped in a toxic relationship that just makes you want to bang your head against a wall, you know? So this is when that numbness began to fade, is when I started working with Bob on these songs. And the reason we chose Abel for my artist name was just random, honestly. It was out of the blue one day that we just decided to do that. For me, it had a little bit more context biblically, because part of the situation with me getting kicked out was because of my parents' religious belief. I'm really just spilling all on the internet today. Isn't that fun? Isn't that cute? A lot of my first EP, Nothing But Forbidden Fruit, which me and Bob wrote together um, with a friend of ours named Court, it digs into that. That struggle and that inner turmoil I had with not only my parents, but the church, my relationships around me, my traumas being reignited by this new trauma that ripped open the old wounds, basically. And it was a really low point in my life when this was happening, but it was a high in my music life, if that makes sense. Me and Bob would meet in the studio, we'd meet every Thursday and would write together and just talk for hours and hours. Music therapy was a whole other device that broke down that part of myself that kept saying, you need to make other people happy. You can't do what you want. You, you have to do what other people want. And that's when I truly started coming into my artistry. And through all these years, I, I was just kind of tucked back, relearning to love music and what it originally did for me, which was allowed me to organize my thoughts into their cubbies. Being able to be a part of production was a huge game changer for me because I had been in several studios before this point. I was never offered the ability to play a guitar on a song or even learn any sort of like da or anything like that. I was never even like shown the option because weirdly enough, it isn't really pushed on females in the music industry to learn how to produce. And oftentimes I feel like it's because girls are pressured into that kind of singer songwriter box. I had for a long time felt that way. It's so weird that I did because I never even thought about doing it on my own. I really don't understand why I didn't, but Bob introduced me to the idea of, hey, you can do these things. You can put a piano part on this. You can do a Rhodes part on this. And I was like, oh my God, I can. From that point forward, I started becoming really interested in music production. So one night randomly in a session, he had brought up the idea of this sampler device called the SP404SX and it's by the brand Roland. And he had showed me some videos of it online being used. It's this same, I gotta grab it. You can run any instrument through this and you can use all the various effects on the side. You can EQ through this thing. They have an incredible vinyl simulator on it. And you can basically load any samples you want, drum samples, audio samples into these pads here, any song samples. And Bob introduced me to this device cause he had wanted me to use it for my live sets when I couldn't do them with him. Cause our plan with my Able project, which by the way, I've never performed live as Able yet. And I'm really excited to. For the live sets that Bob couldn't be there with me for, load your songs onto the pads and DJ them live. And I was like, that is the tightest idea I have ever heard. Watched videos of it all night. And the next day I had asked my mom, cause my birthday was coming up. I was like, hey bestie, can you buy me this for my birthday and only this? And she said yes, and she got it for me. That's actually what jump started me into physically starting to do production is this device because Though you can literally produce within this device and you can literally do things dollless with this thing, I realized that I was so interested in layering my guitar parts and my piano parts over stuff and building tracks, then putting them in. I wanted to be able to be a little more productive on my own time. So I then started to use Logic, which I had in my home because my mom had bought Logic Pro and the Akai Mini keyboard for my brother. He had never once touched that shit. Not one time. I got Logic on my computer um, for my parents' Apple ID. I hope it was not illegal. After two months of dabbling in Logic and the 404 and making some of the most kids bop ass beats you have ever heard. In November of 2019, I decided to put out my very first 404 video. And the thing that I did for this video is I covered the song Redbone um, by Childish Gambino and I made a version of it and I put it into my 404 and I sang it live with a microphone through a guitar amp and this through my computer. My frequency 
on my recording. It's crunchy, dude. It's like a Dorito bag of a song. So after taking a year long hiatus from Instagram, because I had stopped my Abby Ward project officially a year earlier and was just like, I'm done with Instagram. I'm gonna wipe it. Let's, let's just be silent for a moment. And I posted this Redbone video on the internet. From that point on, I continued to post 404 videos. At this point in time, I'm completely connected with my music. I've never felt more connected with the music that I'm making. And as of 2019 to now, I've had some of the most influential music experiences and some of the most special music experiences I could ever wish to have in my life. And I'm so beyond thankful for those things. And I'm thankful that I was able to find myself again within my music and find that passion that I felt was dimming, you know? For me, I didn't want to continue doing the same thing over and over again, even if it was working, it just wasn't authentic. It felt like a brick wall between me and the people I was sharing my music with. Being able to spend this time since 2019 just really focusing on writing, falling into the styles I like, experimenting with sounds, learning new instruments. I learned bass and drums during this time. I learned how to produce. And I wanted to tell you guys, this is a big little announcement. My song, Can't Love You The Way I Hate You, is coming out June 18th. I genuinely cannot believe it has been this long since I've released music. My last Spotify release, was I believe early last year in March I have new music coming out and I'm in it to win it this is stuff that I am genuinely so proud of these are songs that I want you guys to hear so badly and I'm ready to share them with the world so if you could pre-save this song which means you get all the notifications for when it comes out and also the same thing goes for my YouTube channel. If you like the videos that I'm posting, if you wanna support me, make sure to share, like, and subscribe. I'm seriously so excited to be releasing this song. Funny enough, the way that I wrote this song is the day that I broke up with my ex-girlfriend, I immediately afterwards went to the studio and I wrote this song about the situation. This is basically the funkiest breakup song you'll ever hear. I'm seriously so excited to be releasing it. We filmed a music video in quarantine me and Bob did together and um, I edited it all myself. I edited it, edited it, ed I edited it all myself in quarantine. It took me a month and a half and it hurt and I had like maybe three mental breakdowns, but it's okay because it's done and that's what matters. And it's gonna be coming out a week after the song comes out. So please keep an eye out for that. It's gonna be my first music video ever. Honestly, sharing this new stuff with you guys is gonna be such an experience because I'm gonna be doing this vlog series where I get to walk you guys along in the process of making these songs and breaking that barrier between me and you guys. Lots of new stuff coming your way and a not so silent version of myself on this platform. Leave a comment down below for any types of videos you guys would like to see, whether that's another sit down like this, even though this is probably gonna be super boring, it's fine. But you guys are fantastic and I'm so thankful for each and every one of you. So have a nice day and I will see you in the next one. Thank you.